Hello everyone and welcome to another video. I am Stephanie Kilgast and thank you so much for choosing to watch my video. I'm very happy that you are here with me today while I will be showing you how I painted Bubbling Tower. Now this specific painting is very much inspired by the Tower of Babel. Babel, I'm not exactly sure you would pronounce it in English and I forgot to check, sorry about that. More specifically the painting from uh, Peter uh, Bruegel, the Elder, uh, though many artists have worked on that specific theme of the Tower of Babel. And uh, yeah, so this is the point of origin, the idea, the original idea for the painting you are going to see during this video. So I did draw uh, first, of course. I usually start with a pencil drawing and then I go back in with ink. I did not record that part simply because at that time I thought I would not bother recording that specific painting. But of course I decided otherwise and then I recorded all the painting process. So you don't have the ink drawing but you do have the watercolor process. Now that being said, watching me draw with ink is not super interesting because I'm simply going over the pencil drawing and um, yeah, recording the pencil drawing itself is extremely complex because you just, you, you see nothing basically. Uh, yeah, so that's just a few technical notes, I suppose, on why you don't see me drawing. Uh, I hope that's not too much of an issue. Um, I honestly, I think the watercolor process is much more satisfying to watch and it's just prettier, to be honest. Especially since my drawing usually is very minimal. I don't really do any shading since uh, I color it afterwards, so I work on the shadows. That being said, the drawing is probably the hardest part of any painting because this is the moment where you have to be careful with the composition, with the details, with perspective, um, and yeah, and to get everything right. So drawing is really the hardest part. And once you've done the drawing, the watercolor, uh, the watercolor process and coloring, really that's the easy fun part. So um, yeah, drawing, is um, relatively difficult, so to speak, in the sense that you have to be careful, while the watercoloring part is much, much easier. Um, yeah, and so, uh, yeah, the idea, but it's pretty self-explanatory, uh, as my work usually is, but is to create a tower of cell phones. So these are all old cell phones. I kind of wanted to pick and choose a bunch of different cell phones that have been used over the years. I used the internet heavily to find models and incidentally I forgot to add the most iconic one, the Nokia 3310. So <laughs> I, I really apologize for that. When I realized I forgot to add that specific one I was like, but it was the only one that really mattered. <laughs> Uh, it's one that I had as a teenager, um, but at the time it was always off because I hated the idea of being joinable, if that makes sense. Probably, I mean, the younger people among you will probably not understand this, but when I was a teenager, my mom got me a cell phone. I was, I don't know, 15, maybe 16. I don't recall exactly at what age. And so she give she gave me that cell phone so she could join me uh, during the day, uh, so she could know where I was. And I hated that concept. So it was either off or on mute. And I basically I never used it uh, because at the time when we would meet outside with friends, we would just you know have a specific uh, time frame. I don't know. Uh, let's meet at five in front of um, that shop and that was it and then we would be there at five in front of that shop. So we really, we really didn't need any kinds of cell phones. And um, yeah, and at the time it was, it, it was a different, <laughs> honestly it feels almost like a different 
epoch um, it was so different from nowadays where everyone is always using their cell phone for everything for everything um, but yeah so I didn't use it much and I actually got rid of it when I moved to France so after my I don't really know the equivalent in English but basically when you're 18 in France you um, you do this, uh, an exam at the end of high school, which is called baccalauréat. And so I was in a school in Germany. And after that, I went to France to study. And the first two years, I think, of my studies, I did not own a cell phone because I just didn't see the point of it. I was like one of the odd ones that never had a cell phone. And so people started, it started to become a thing back then. So it was 2003, 2004. Most people had a cell phone back then. And one of the usual questions you would get was to know which, what was your cell phone number. And it was like, I don't have one. <laughs> and people always looked at me like, oh, okay, well, that's a bit odd. But that was still, I mean, it was a bit odd, but it was not unheard of. But I did need to work. And, um, and one of the types of works I would do was to take care of kids and children. And for that, you did need a cell phone because they would send you messages when something was available. And um, if you didn't have a cell phone, you could not get that message and so you could not work. So that's why I ended up buying a cell phone. I don't recall what it was, to be honest. It was something rather basic. I think you had internet access, but it was very limited and I, I just didn't really care for it. Probably was Nokia um, at the time because Nokia was still like the m most known brand, I would say. And life went on like this until I started to work as a miniaturist and then an artist. Instagram came around. From then on, I started using smartphones. So really, I'm using a cell phone and a smartphone for my job. In my personal life, I rarely use the phone. I mean, nowadays, of course, we're so used to it. I use WhatsApp with my parents. But before that, we just would use the landline. <laughs> and that was okay, you know. It was not harder to use. It was not less efficient. Uh, we, Of course, you couldn't do video calls, uh, but I hate those anyway. So um, yeah, we would just phone over landline and that was fine. Uh, but nowadays, uh, smartphones come and go. New ones come out every six months, sometimes less. And uh, yeah, we go through them extremely fast. I mean, I'm trying to keep them longer, but Usually I can only manage five years until the thing dies on me or just doesn't work or all the apps are more demanding. And five years is really nothing. It's kind of ridiculous in a way how we are so used to things that break down and stop working after just a few years because most objects in the history of humanity have been made to last centuries probably and not just five years or two years sometimes so yeah it's kind of sad and uh, yeah that's kind of the idea of babbling tower really because the, the tower of babel um, is about humans going too far and everything is breaking down on them and i feel like we're exactly at the same time right now where we're going too far in our ways of uh, producing things we don't really need, uh, overproducing, overconsuming, until the whole thing is going to break down our society as we know it. And that's not necessarily a bad thing, but usually collapse isn't uh, fun. So that's kind of sad that we have to go that far in being reckless about everything instead of being more mindful about the things we do and use. And specifically electronic devices, you can buy second-hand ones. And uh, my current smartphone is actually a second-hand uh, phone that I've had for three years now, I think. Uh, hopefully I can still keep it a good two years, maybe more, uh, that would be nice. So yeah, that's like an option to reduce your impact a little bit. 
Um, if you can afford not to have a cell phone, then that's great too. Or a smartphone, because honestly, using cell phones, like the old things, like for instance, the Nokia 3310, is a lot less impactful than using a smartphone, simply because you use a lot less energy to consume whatever you have on it and to use the internet and WhatsApp and so on. So the battery usually would last maybe a week, uh, sometimes longer. Whereas smartphones, the batteries are insanely efficient, but you still use it up in one or two days, simply because you use it as a miniature computer. And then, of course, the fact that uh, many of us change the smartphones or electronic devices, for that matter, every year or sometimes more often even. Uh, yeah, that has a huge impact. So um, this is just not sustainable. And this is at the core, the message of the painting you're currently seeing develop uh, in this video. So I wanted to talk about that. In terms of technique about that painting, there's not a lot to say honestly. So the ink drawing was made with waterproof ink. Um, nowadays I mostly use Diatramentus ink, um, waterproof black ink. And then the watercolor is mostly Schmincke, but I also like Sennelier, which is French, and M. Graham, which is from the States. Though as I live in France, I would not buy M. Graham again. Not because it's not good, it's a great watercolor brand. But I just think it's a bit silly to buy something that has to travel from the US when we have great local brands in Europe. So that's really the main reason for that. And I also used a bit of colored pencils here and there. And yeah, that's, that's pretty much all there is to say about that painting. I don't usually use very fancy techniques. I just, you know, draw and color. So it's very, very simple, very basic. But yeah, I kind of like working like that. It's it's fun to me and um, I like working with a lot of colors because the theme usually is a bit depressing. <laughs> so I want to kind of up the theme and um, the society we live in can be a little bit depressing. So I want to use a lot of colors to make everything a lot more cheerful. This artwork will also be available as a print. You can check the link below. And it's going to be part of an online art group show with Wow Wow Gallery. So if you're interested in getting the original painting, that's an option as well. And that's pretty much all I have to say for today's video. I really hope you enjoyed the narration, even though it might have been a bit heavy the process, uh, the painting, and so on. And uh, yeah, my work in general, I suppose. If you want to see more of my work, you can find me on Instagram. I go along the Monica Petit Plat. And I'm also recently on TikTok, though I'm less active there. And I'm Stephanie Kilgast, that's my full name. And you can also see my work on my own website. You can find all the links in the description box below and uh, yeah. If you watch until the end, let me know by leaving a phone emoji in the comments below or alternatively, you could tell me if you have a cell phone, a smartphone, if you like using it, if you hate it or if it's just for your job or if you don't have any at all. I'm actually really curious to know your habits about cell phones. Thank you so much for being there with me today and I wish you a lovely day or night and I really hope to see you in my next video. Bye!